Okay. <clears throat> okay. So what are you all, uh, what's your next project? What are you um, right now we are, we are actually in post-production on my last film, which we, direct, we shot and I directed last summer, 2008. And uh, we're working on finishing up the edit, uh, doing some of the sound design, and working on the score. But concurrently, we're in pre-production for my next movie that I'm actually producing. A friend of mine, Chris, is going to direct. And uh, it's called Imago. We're shooting it in the Houston area. Uh, and Marcus, our, our special effects guy, is in town from Tampa, Florida. And we have about a month of pre-production to build all the effects and cast all the actors and start building, building uh, some of the prosthetics for some kills that, that are going to happen in Imago. And we start shooting that August 1st, and we shoot through August the 15th. And it's going to be in the Houston-Galveston area. And it's going to star Lisa Wilcox from Nightmare 4 and 5, Debbie Rashawn from a ton of stuff, and some of our returning cast from Closet Space and Walking Distance. So how long is it usually from start to finish, from pre-production to post-production? From... Well, walking distance, I mean, we're still kind of working on it about a year. It's, we were shooting about a year ago, almost exactly a year ago. And we started pre-production on that in maybe March, so it's been a little over a year. Probably it's going to be about a year and a half turnkey from start to finish for that one. But Imago is sort of designed to be shot, edited, and ready to go in a relatively short time. Like, we're hoping to have it, that movie finished by the end of the year. So we're going to have two kind of come out, one come out right after the other. So, I mean, we have, uh, it's kind of a more simple shoot. Uh, our shooting schedule is 14 days as opposed to, I think we had 30 days on walking distance. And uh, while Chris is doing the edit on that, I'll be sort of finishing up the walking distance stuff. So we're kind of working concurrently. I'd like to say so, but somehow I always figure out a way to make it harder. <laughs> like <laughs> walking distance, I decided we decided to have like, I think there were a total of 47 speaking roles and we probably had 15 locations spread out from Kingwood to Galveston and every place in between. Uh, we had several name actors. We it was our first SAG production, so we had you know dealt with the union. So we kind of like took a big jump there. And then even though this is a smaller picture and I'm only producing, the, the hurdles still are kind of the same, you know, dealing with the union stuff and just setting up the shoot and doing the, the effects. I think if we probably, if I decided to do like a My Dinner with Andres thing or something like that, I'd still find a way to screw it up <laughs> and make it difficult. Uh, what, what roles have you played in movie making? Uh, you have your career? Uh, pretty much everything, including like every boom operator, production assistant, editor, director, writer, producer, cinematographer, composer now, uh, sound designer. I've even done a bit of acting here and there. Um, so pretty much everything. And I, I actually find that if I, with the experience of having done all those roles, it's either easier to communicate with the people that are doing those roles for you if you don't have to do all that stuff. So it's kind of easier to let people know what you want. And you also have empathy it towards their position like you know if the lighting guy like if the lights are blowing everywhere I mean you know you kind of been in that position before so you know what's going on so you don't flip out or at least not as quickly <laughs> and you know you kind of know where they're coming from uh d directing definitely because you know you're the captain of the ship and I mean, there was a, the definite moment for me on walking distance is when we were shooting in Galveston, and we shot on the Strand, and we closed down three city blocks, and there were cops everywhere, and like cranes and stuff, and huge lights, and the, the scene called for just like mass carnage, basically a bunch of people sort of, you know, running down the street covered in blood, and I mean, when I said action, you just hear like this roar, like, and it got louder and louder and louder. And then people turn the corner, and there's like hundreds of people just hauling ass down the street, covered in blood, screaming their butts off. And I'm like, dude, I made that happen, you know? Like, so that that for me was like the ultimate sort of nerd filmmaker nerd moment. <laughs> uh, and producing, and I co-wrote the script. Oh, okay. Yeah.
Right. Um, it's there. There's definitely a lot involved, and it's what's kind of interesting and sort of like edifying, but annoying at the same time. Is that I'm doing stuff on this movie that I never really had to do before, and there's a reason I never had to do it because I don't like really dealing with people, or like being you know the guy that has to negotiate with the agents and stuff like that. I'm just really, I don't think I'm that kind of guy. But now I've you know kind of threw myself into the role, and now I have to do it. So I have to negotiate contracts and talk to agents and deal with unions and fill out all the paperwork and all the mundane, like, non-artsy stuff, you know, uh, that's pretty boring but necessary. Um, and also organizing, you know, make the makeup guys and craft services, making sure everybody's fed, getting everybody's dietary restrictions down, you know, if vegetarians or if they don't eat wheat or whatever, you know, stuff like that. And... Um, you know, just kind of running the ship, but in a different way, sort of like operating behind the scenes. So it's, it's definitely a learning experience. But again, I'm glad to have those skills because I'll know, I'll kind of know more the next time I'm in the, the director driver's seat and uh, kind of, you know, bring that to the table there as well. Um, we have, here at the studio, we've got our upstairs loft is our editing and music composition and just sort of like general work area. Downstairs is storage where I have all the equipment. We have all our lights, audio equipment, camera equipment, uh, effects supplies for Marcus, um, and just like building tools like lumber and stuff because we build sets as well. Like, and we're actually going to build uh, two fake rooms in the warehouse area. Um, a bedroom and a bathroom, and that's so we can do some trick photography and pull off some special effects, where, like the walls are bleeding and stuff like that, that you wouldn't obviously be able to do in a normal house. So we kind of, we kind of do it all here, you know, from from the pre-production to building this stuff to finishing it up 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 here upstairs, you know. Um, no, <laughs> sorry, I, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> Whenever someone asks me that question, I always like just yeah, gas out. <laughs>